Okay, we're going to replace the uh, clutch on a uh, 2001 Salika. This is the new clutch that I got from Katra Automotive for $150 Canadian. That's the entire kit. This is the pressure plate. Throw it bearing. The disc. And alignment tool. And for this repair, we're going to follow this instruction I uh, got from a uh, forum by Smay. This instruction is for a Celica GTS, but the GT that I'm going to do the repair for is almost the same. Okay, first things first, we're going to remove these uh, plastic cover. They're usually held by a push tap like that, whatever is left on your car, just pop it up. Okay, according to the instructions, the second thing we do is jack the car up. So we'll do that next. Okay, with the car up in the air, I got the uh, jack stands under the car on both sides. Next, we're going to take out the battery. For this, you need a uh, 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. Seems loose already. And this side has got a wing nut. That makes things easy. Take out the terminals. Again, 10 millimeter socket. Okay, so positive. Negative. Battery's up. We're gonna go under the car and take out the covers. These engine covers, mine are secured with a uh, zip tie, so it's nice and easy. Only two hands. Yeah, I did run into some bolts that were severely rusted, and when I tried to open them, they just snapped off. And to take out the uh, one underneath the engine on the uh, driver's side, you probably need to... It's easier if you take out the uh, tire first, because they're all hooked up, up uh, behind the tire. So we're going to go ahead and take the tires out. Okay, with the bottom engine cover all off, the next step was to drain the uh, transmission fluid. This 24 millimeter bolt right here is a transmission fluid drain plug. Unfortunately, I don't have the uh, socket at the moment, so we're going to skip that for now, leave it for later. And I'm going to take, uh, take out the uh, axle nut. To take out the axle nut, there's a little indent right in here we have to take that endant out with a punch in order to be able to take out the axle nut which is a 30 millimeter so we're gonna go ahead and do that next okay to take out the uh, factory indent uh, I'm going to use a small flathead bit this is what I used on the other side and I managed to take it out without uh, stripping the threads on the axle shaft so I'm just gonna put it right under there and then hammer it from, uh, from behind
can see you need two hands for this. Okay, I managed to straighten it out. So what I found easy is when you're hammering it, you gotta go in a couple of times and then from the top a couple of times, that way it lifts up the lip. And the way I have it right now, should be easy to take it out, no problem. Again, this is 30 millimeter. Not damaged at all. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna say if you use uh, WD-40, the mixing is a lot easier. So next step would be taking out the calipers, and for that you need two. We well, got two 14 millimeter bolts. So we're gonna go ahead and open that next. Use both hands opening that and I'll record again. Okay, so I've taken out the bolts. Next, I may have to pry it. So, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, suspend this up here somewhere. I don't have a bungee cord, so I'm just gonna wrap it up with a wire. Okay, with the caliper up in the air, next we're going to go ahead and open up these two bolts. I'm going to take out the uh, bottom one completely and then leave the top, just loosen up the top. And I'm going to hammer this a couple of times until, after I loosen that up and I'll take out the top of them as well. And if you're doing your brakes, this is probably a good time to do it. Okay, for this you need a 19mm. I'm going to put a 19mm uh, socket on this side just in case it starts spinning. As you can see it is spinning already. Gotta put it in and hook up the handle somewhere there so it secures it. That feels a little loose. Go ahead and do the same thing with the bottom one. See how that does. Let's see if you have an impact wrench, it makes things a lot easier. Okay, I'm just gonna go out, go ahead and leave that there for now. I think I'm going to do is take the bottom one out.
Okay, bottom one is out. And tap the axis shaft a couple of times. Okay, now we'll take out the top one. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off and try to manage to uh, pull this out somehow. Just tap it, uh, hit it with a hammer a couple of times because this needs to come out of the other end. Okay, after hitting with a hammer a couple of times, it went right in. So I'm going to use a pry bar. Not a one hand job. Just gotta make sure you don't damage the splines there. Okay, I'm gonna use both hands to uh, pull that right up. Okay, so I have one of the axle out. Uh, just a reminder: if you if your Solic has a GTS, be sure to remove the. Uh, ABS sensor. I think it's located somewhere here. Uh, mine is a GT. It doesn't have one. So because I haven't drained the oil uh, yet, I'm not going to pull out the other end of the axle. I've never done this before. I don't know what will happen. Let me get some oil spillage. So I'll wait. Probably do that tomorrow when I purchase a 24mm because I don't have one. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, skip to the next step. Okay, next we're going to plug the ECU, uh, as you can see, the little box over here that says do not remove or do not open. I've opened it up already. It has two 10 millimeter bolts, I'm just going to put that aside. And under this ground plug, there's supposed to be another 10 millimeter that we need to open it. She is. Okay, I need a deeper socket. Take all the plugs out. Hopefully they're all different. Yeah, I want to put them in the wrong way. Yep, they're all different. That's good. Hold on for a second. Okay, so that's all up. Just gonna pull out the ECU. There's your ECU. Next, we're gonna move out all these uh, cables out of the uh, box.
that being out, we got one. two, three bolts, and then we'll be able to take out the box. With all the three bolts out, we're going to take this uh, thing away, whatever it is, and try to put the ECU box. It's not secured to anything anymore except for a little clip right here that's holding this cable. Okay, all it is just a little tape wrapped around it. Let's take tape off. Should be able to remove it. There we go. That's out of the way. Next, I've uh, removed the EVAP line already, and I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, battery tray. And for this, you need a 12 millimeter. There are three bolts, and they're not in good condition. And go ahead and do the same with the other two. Okay, so I've loosened the uh, three bolts for uh, the battery tray, and the only other thing that this uh, will be hooked up is uh, the ECU cable over here and the positive battery terminal. All you gotta do is just pull the uh, tabs, and then uh, this thing comes right out. And next, what we're going to do is there's two ground wires that's hooked up to transmission. There's one here and one down there, right at the back. Gonna pull both of these out. Okay, next I'm going to take out the uh, the air intake. Uh, mine is just a factory uh, air box, so I've taken out the cap already. Uh, you gotta undo the hose uh, up here and take out all the little air hose from the side and unplug the air sensor wire here, and the cap comes right off. After unclipping, unclipping all these, and next uh, you get a bolt up here, and one down there, right under your relay box. So to get to that one, I'll have to take out the uh, relay box. There's a little clip in the back, and again, this is well rusted. Okay, I'm just going to use a short socket to take that out. Once I take that out, then I uh, should be able to take uh, the rest of the uh, air and take out no problems. Before we take out the rest of the box, just keep in mind there's a lot of uh, little air lines and air hoses. Maybe take a picture or something so you know where to exactly go. So once you're putting it uh, back together, you don't miss anything. There's a lot of these guys, so I'm just gonna take a picture just so when I'm putting it back together, I'll know where everything goes. Okay, with the intake out, we've got lots of room to play here. We're gonna loosen up the uh, front motor mount and it's located right here on the right corner. Right beside the uh, large uh, fuse and relay box. That nut right there, we're going to loosen that up. Okay, so that front uh, motor mount is loose. 
I used a 14 millimeter socket and now we gotta loosen up the uh, rear motor mode and for that you need a 17 millimeter and probably need to connect three or four extensions to get to it see it's that guy right there that's what we need to get at Okay, the socket extensions that I had was not long enough to reach the uh, rear mount. Uh, what I am going to do is I have put in a socket in there already from the top. I'm going to put a cheat bar on it and try to open it up this way. Okay, by putting a cheat bar at the end of my uh, ratchet, I managed to uh, loosen it. Uh, it's just a matter of taking it out. There's a lot of things on the way. Uh, it's going to be a slow process. Okay, next we're going to open the transmission drain plug. It's supposed to be a 24 millimeter metric, but I'm going to use a 15, 16 standard, same thing. It's located right down here. It is a little tight. I'll open it all up. Okay, transmission plug is open and it's draining now. And for this car, the transmission fluid that you will need is a 7590 GL4 or 5. I got this from Napa for $18 a bottle, a liter. If you go to Toyota, they go for about $65 a liter. So that's the cheapest stuff you can get. And it only comes in synthetic. Okay, after draining the transmission oil, I'm going to take out the uh, drive shafts. I'm taking this one out already. All you got to do is hold it nice and straight and give it a nice pull, and it comes right up. Just need to put it somewhere safe. You don't get any dents on that spines there. To take out the passenger side. Uh, Axle. It's uh, there's one more step. We gotta take out these two bolts. This is called the carrier. There's a bolt up here and one down here. They're both 14 millimeters. Once we pull these out, then uh, we'll be able to pull out the drive shaft through this uh, housing right here, and then uh, straight out of the transmission. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that next. Okay, so far, opening up the uh, drive axle CV mount has been a challenge. Uh, it's bonded so badly with rust. What I've done is uh, taking a, an old screwdriver, just wedge it right in, and starting to open up slowly. I've tried it with pry bar and everything else, and I had no luck. And this is the only way that I was able to uh, split it apart. So all I gotta do is. Put that on there, keep hammering it. Okay, so this is gonna be one of the challenging parts. Okay, after 45 minutes of hammering and prying, I managed to take this coupler apart. And now our passenger side draft shaft is all up. Okay, you can see right here that I have the rear motor mount almost out. I managed to pull it out with a uh, impact wrench from this side. And I'm not going to take it out just yet. I'm going to leave it loose like that. And uh, before I take it completely out, I'll go to the next step. Okay, next step, we're going to remove... Uh, anything that's holding the clutch line together. So this here is the clutch line. I'm gonna follow it. And it comes in from the master cylinder. We're gonna leave, actually no, we're gonna take it up from right here. It's bolted on underneath the uh, front engine mount. This is the mount and that's your 
bolt for the clutch line right under there. That one right there. We're gonna follow this line along. Go right, right in the bottom and open that nut there. We're gonna open this nut here. This one, this part is flexible and this part is not. So you're gonna follow that, you're gonna open that here. And open this guy. After we open this guy, we're gonna open these two underneath it. This is your slave cylinder. Once we open up all of them, we could move uh, the clutch line out of the way. You don't have to open the hydraulic system. As this part is flexible, you just uh, push it out of the way, that's all. So I'm going to go ahead and do that next. Take out the shifter bolt, or shifter mount bolt. There is one here that's already taken out. And one beside it I need to take out before I do that. I unplug three wires for a speed sensor and a couple more. One of them I believe is a reverse sensor. Okay, the shifter mount is opened up. It's all loose. These are the bolts. That's one side and this is the other side. It comes with a little piece that the wire was uh, clipped on. And I've also loosened up the front motor mount. And that's this mount right here. I've loosened that up. And earlier I mentioned that this was the front motor mount. This is not the front motor mount. This is the driver side uh, motor mount. This is loose as well. That guy's loose as well. There it is. And the one at the back is loose as well. Let me see if you can see it. I still got my ratchet right there. Okay, next we're going to remove the uh, shifter linkage on the transmission. These little clips, just grab them with a pliers, pull. There you go, Put that up. That's one of them. And there was a front somewhere here. see it but it's right there so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that and then uh, take that cable up okay so I've taken out the uh, shifter lines there's one here there's one there they're both loose and I hung them up here so they don't dangle once we take the transmission out I've also hung the uh, clutch line here so it doesn't get damaged uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, starter up. It's the starter right here up front. Uh, yep. This guy. There's a bolt underneath underneath the starter right here. I believe it's 17 millimeter. And there's one on the other side of the transmission. There's one in the front. Right there. So one here. One there. I'm going to take both those out. And while I was at it, I took this bolt up for the cover because it looks like it's hooked up on the transmission. It might be on our way. So I just took that out, put it in a safe place so we don't lose it. Okay, I have to start it loosen, uh, loosened up. That's one of the bolts in the back. It's actually a 14 millimeter. Uh, that's the bottom one and then the one in the, the front of the bell housing, it's already out. And there's a wire here. Push that little pin thingy. And that wire comes right up. And this guy here, you pop the cap and we open that bolt. That's the, uh, that's the bolt that supplies continuous voltage to the starter. And that looks like a 12 uh, millimeters. Yeah, 12 millimeter socket. I'm going to take that out, and once I take that out, I'll give uh, the starter a nudge, and it should, it should pop up.
Okay, the starter is out, and now I'm gonna loosen up. Actually, I'm gonna take out this bolt. This is the bolt that's securing the transmission to the engine. And this bolt, they're both 14 millimeter. I'm gonna take both of them out. Okay, you can see these two bolts are out. Next, I'm gonna take out these two. They're very easy to take off because usually it's moist with uh, some oil on them. So they're not that fat. Okay, these two bolts are up as well. What I didn't notice is the two bolts in the bottom or they are very short. And the ones on the side, which is right behind the firewall, these guys here, they're long. So as I go around the uh, transmission, the sizes of the bolts may vary. Just got to keep them in mind so we put them back in the right places. Okay, back on top of the engine. Now we're going to remove these two 17 millimeter bolts. There's one right there. Uh, right there, that's one of them. And the other one is hidden behind these harnesses. It's right behind this harness up here. Oh, right there, I see a corner. Right there. I get, once I take these two out, and that will be it. The transmission is on its own. The only thing that will be holding the transmission up is the, the mounts. So I'm going to go ahead and put those two bolts. Okay, the top two bolts are out. Now the two in the bottom are short. The two behind the firewall are slim and tall. And the two bolts on the top of the transmission, they're long and they're a little fatter. Okay, so the transmission is all out. Uh, one thing I need to tell you is uh, the mount on the uh, driver's side you got to take it completely out because it's on the way from the one the piece on the transmission and the piece on the car so you got it right here that's the piece on the transmission and that's the piece that's on the car and I also took out the uh, mount over there and the one in the front as well down here the one that's holding the transmission so the engine is actually Right now it's only hooked to one mount, but it's just resting on the uh, crossbar in the middle. And it should also tell you that there's this weight blower thing that goes back here, right behind the firewall. You need to take that out because that's on the way. It's a 10 millimeter long bolt. So what I did is uh, I lowered the transmission with the jack and I removed the jack. I don't have to drop the transmission completely. I got it hanging by a rope so I could uh, have uh, easy access to uh, the throw out bearing, no problems, and uh, I should be able to remove the clutch easily. The transmission is just hanging in the air. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and take out the uh, pressure plate. It's secured with six 12 millimeter bolts. Okay, as you can see, the flywheel is spinning, so I'm going to put something somewhere around the, uh, the teat so it doesn't spin. I'll take off the pressure plate and I'll start recording again. So what we need to do is put on old screwdriver right through the uh, starter hole and just jam it in there and let's see there you go I'm jamming it right in there and I'm gonna open that with a ratchet I don't have to go under the car or anything when I'm done opening this one I remove this I uh, spin the uh, flywheel and I get to the next bolt 
and I'll open the other one. Remove the six bolts uh, from the uh, pressure plate and now I'm going to try and remove the uh, pressure plate. Okay, it seems a little hard. I may have to pry it out. Okay, so I got the pressure plate and the disc out. Just uh, remember when you're taking it out, uh, you got to make sure you hold this the right way because it's not the same. You don't want to put the new one wrong. So this is the old one. It's pretty worn out. There's not much left in there. Look at it over here. Got lots of grooves. And to take it out from uh, the flywheel, it's a little snug. All you gotta do is uh, just pry it up a little bit from that corner and then this corner, and then it just falls on your hand. Just gotta make sure it just doesn't fall on the floor, so you remember which way it goes. You gotta put the new one the same way. And then I've got the new one right here. It's a little different. This one has got rubber. Yeah, but this one's got springs. I don't know if this is an original Toyota part. Oh, it's done its time. So in my case, my flywheel is in a very good shape. I'm not going to touch it, just leave it to where it is. I am going to replace this because the kit came with a new one. And we do have to grease this when you're putting it back in. It's pretty dry right now. And the kit came with the grease. And also alignment tool when you're putting it back in. There's one uh, for GM and this little guy is for Toyota. It says Toyota right on it. So, I'm putting it back in. Got to put the alignment tool from behind the pressure plate. Sorry, just one handed. Got to put that in from the back. Like that. Just to center it. Once you center it, you tighten all your bolts and you grease the spline, replace you your throwout bearing, and then uh, put your transmission back on, and all kinds of fun stuff again. Okay, so our new clutch is on. What I did is I uh, put on the uh, six bolts, and they're very loose. If you tighten them, you won't be able to align the disc. And for alignment tool, I use the GM. See the top is nice and thick. The one for Toyota on the right is thin. You can't really align properly with that. I know the hole on the uh, flywheel is exact same as this one. So when you put this one in, it actually centers it, centers it pretty good. See, I have it dead on center right now. There's barely any room for movement. When I put the Toyota one, because the top is too thin, it actually moves around. So I can't really tell if it's centered or not. This one here right now is pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, torquing the bolts around the uh, pressure plate. And uh, according to this, we're supposed to uh, torque them to 16 pounds. So I'll go ahead and do that and then and then I have to see if I could put the transmission back together alone by myself. If not, I have to wait for a friend to come over. Putting uh, everything back together uh, should be much easier than taking it apart. So while I was taking them apart, there was a lot of rust and uh, stuff that I didn't know uh, how it's going to turn out when I open it. So there were a lot of delays and putting it together shouldn't be a problem.
And that's how you do your clutch.